I challenged myself to beat Final Fantasy IX with only Zidane, or Zidane, however you say it, because I love to suffer. And his teammates love to suffer too, so much so that the only action they can take is killing themselves. And Zidane cannot take an action until they've done that. The full rules for this run are in the description, so take a look at those if you have any questions, and let's jump right in. And the first battle of the game is against Daddy Baku, who isn't too much of an issue. I do delay the end of this battle by just a little bit because I want to get the Mage Masher. It's basically a complete upgrade to Zidane's normal dagger, so I want to have it because he's going to be the only one who's dealing damage and this will let him do more. And then we meet up with our next character, a mysterious Black Mage, and we grab a bunch of potions because Zidane doesn't have healing in this game, which is going to be a big issue as we progress. And we gotta name him, so I name him Subscribe, or in this case, Subscribe, since there's an eight character count limit for all names in this game. And the next battle in the game is part of the stage play I want to be your canary. And if you are a theater aficionado as I am, you know that when there is stage fighting in a play, it is fake. But uh, not in this play. Apparently it's very real, and I learned that because I die in this battle, which does not bode well for the rest of the run. And did I save? No. No, I didn't. <laughs> hey. That hurts. So I start the whole game over again, and this time I don't f*** it up. It's literally one of the easiest battles in the game, but I am definitely not messing shit up after this. I am going to play perfectly and not do bad things that are going to cause me to die. Not going to do it. And one of the things that's going to cause me to die a lot in this run, because you know what's going to happen. I sort of just told you that with that foreshadowing before, right? Is the fact that you can speed up this game to three times speed, which is great if you want to make YouTube content, but not so great if you want to survive. It is a refreshing change compared to one of the other games that I cover on this channel, The Legend of Dragoon, because in that game's port to the PS5, you can't skip cutscenes, but you can in Final Fantasy IX, and you can't speed it up, but you can in Final Fantasy IX. But more about remasters in another video, and if you want to watch my Legend of Dragoon challenge runs, I will link those in a discreetly do. But I do have one Chad Gamer moment, which will probably be the only one I have for the rest of this run. I complete the other fake fight scene, the one that can can't kill you perfectly on my first try. Which is actually kind of important because I need the money to buy healing items. And then the princess requests that we kidnap her. And let me tell you, if I had a garnet for every time that happened, well, I'd have one garnet. And then we meet our next deadweight party member who I name Lycaner, which reminds me, you should smash the like. And after he discovers that we are in fact kidnapping the princess that he's sworn to protect, we fight him three times. And there's really not a problem here. We'll just breeze right through it. But the princess's mom, Queen Braun, who as a nurturing soul decides that the best way to save her daughter from these terrible kidnappers is to blow up their ship, which she is currently on. And I don't know, that feels like it should maybe be a parenting red flag. Call me crazy. But now we enter the part of the game where we have our first challenging fights, because the plants in this forest are out of control. The first plant has captured some scrib, and part of the battle's challenge is to keep him alive, but Zidane goes into transform and is able to take out that plant really quickly. <laughs> no, no, no. And then he gets captured again, and this is the only battle in which he'll do any damage. He uses fire intermittently on the plants, and I can't control that. You don't have control over Subscribe at this point in the game. Interestingly, though, and I've never had to do this before, I have to use potions on Subscribe to keep him alive. This battle is scaled pretty well for two characters, namely Zidane and Leichner, but in this case, I only have Zidane, so I need to keep Subscribe alive long enough that we can actually kill the plants. But the plant does go down pretty quickly. And then we get to the big monster mama plant, which presents a little bit of a problem. The first part of the battle is okay. Zidane gets low on health, which isn't too big a deal. His HP is low enough that potions restore a huge portion of his health. The problem is that Blank joins this battle about halfway in. And if you recall the rules, you'll know that Zidane cannot queue up an action until all other characters are dead. But I took a little too long to think about this, and I didn't input the attack command on Blank. So basically, the plant just hits the Don with another tentacle and he dies, meaning we have another death. And I feel like I really could have prevented this one by just not being stupid. So I go back into the battle. And this time I managed to get Blank to kill himself quickly so that Zidane can finish off the plant with his trance. Huge success. That's enough of that. So Blank gets petrified and I'm not too sad about that since he ruined my first run through this battle and we head on to the ice cave. 
Cave. And to Black Walls 1 and the Sea Lion. And this battle is definitely scaled to a Zidane, who is not the only experience herder in the party, so it's not too bad. And then we get to rename Princess Garnet. And of course, I choose the name Sharer. That's a stupid name. And then we head to Dolly, which I think does some of the best storytelling of any Final Fantasy game. Spoiler alert for this part of the video. Skip to the timestamp if you don't want to hear it. One of the core conflicts of this game is that the Kingdom of Alexandria, which is where Sharer lives, is producing black mages, very similar to Subscrib. Subscrib knows nothing about his past and is surprised to find that these black mages are being produced, but the game leaves their actual origin somewhat of a mystery. And we get attacked by another black walls. It takes a while, but Zidane ultimately finishes it off pretty easily without even using trance. I'm so proud of him. But hurt people hurt people, and I'm sure he'll be back. But before that, we have to fight black walls number three. By the way, there are three of them because it's a waltz. Waltzes have three beats per measure, and uh, that's kind of cool. And then Lindbaum Sharer, true to her name, shares a song with us. And then she shares a sedative with us without our consent and leaves the party. I'm sure she's not pivotal to the story. We also let Freya win the Monster Hunter tournament, and we get a coral ring, which absorbs thunder attacks and will come in very handy later. And we next head on to Gizmaluk's Grotto. And the boss, Gizmaluk, has an interesting strategy you can use. If you use a tent on him, he can often be afflicted with both the silence and the blind status, making his battle a lot easier. And that's probably the most reliable way to take care of Gizmaluk. I'm sure I'm not gonna- Oh shit. Yeah, so unfortunately in this game, blindness does not completely prevent a character from hitting their attacks. Nor does it have a 100% chance of making your enemies miss all of their attacks. So even though my chances are much better with Gizmaluk inflicted with blind and silence, because now he can't cast the water spell, this battle is far from a slam dunk. I mean, I guess it probably would have gone better had I not been trying to steal things that you literally don't need in a solo run. But I really didn't learn my lesson because I die again after stealing all the things from Gizmaluk. And then I do it again. I don't know why I hate myself so much. And finally, on my fourth try, RNG favors me, Gizmaluk misses a lot of attacks, and I am through this harrowing battle. But really, this time, I swear I'm just gonna play well for the rest of the run. Next up is a brief bit of exposition with Lycaner and Sharer, and let me just tell you, I love pickles. I love the fact that Sharer is transported in a bag of pickles. I find that kind of hilarious. And now we're back. So we head into Burmesia, the city of the rat people. It's always rainy there, just like Seattle, but with more dead people. And we head into a battle that I'm a little bit worried about, the battle against Beatrix. In a vanilla run, this battle isn't too difficult because Beatrix uses mainly single target attacks. So if somebody dies, you revive them, bada bing, bada boom, you're good. But with a solo run, there is a problem. And that problem is Beatrix's shock spell, which is extremely strong and just kills me in one shot. So I do a little bit of grinding just to get to the point where it won't one shot me. It takes the Dane up to level 19. And I also have him equipped with the Coral Ring, which will make it so that her Thunder Slashes heal me. And lo and behold, he does survive the first shock. So we're on our way until she kills me with the second one because I couldn't recover fast enough. So I do a little bit more grinding and I take Zidane up to level 21. But of course, during my next attempt, I feel the icy fingers of RNG around my throat. Beatrix shocks twice in fairly quick succession, not giving me enough time to heal. But on my next attempt, I burn an elixir after a shock and Beatrix eventually goes down. Hey, and I didn't even have to use trance. I'm so proud of me. But in a shocking plot point, Beatrix uses her pretty privilege to take Zadon down. But we also get to meet my sexy new husband, Kuja. I just want to shove my d- And now we have a little bit of a problem because we go back to Lycaner and Sharer, and they are both hugely underleveled since they haven't participated in any battle so far. And Black Walls 3 is back, returned from the dead. He has a couple of nasty attacks. The first one is Freeze, which can be pretty bad even in a normal run. The Freeze status prevents your character from acting, and if they get attacked, they shatter, which kills them. He also casts powerful magic that can take out both Marcus and Lycaner in one hit. But that makes the path forward relatively straightforward. I basically just don't heal Marcus or Lycaner unless they die. And this strategy gets me the win. But there's one more obstacle to this section of the run. Because we next get to Traino and we ride the giant spider thing. Which of course prompts the party to get attacked by a giant snake. That's just how these things work. Don't ask. So I equip my characters with the antibody status to prevent poison and venom. I think it can cause the venom status.
Marcus. I don't remember. Whatever. And the fight actually goes pretty smoothly with only one Marcus death. And now we're back to Zidane and friends again. I head up Clara's trunk and spend way too much time trying to get this treasure chest, even though it's going to be really easy to get later when all the sandstorm stuff stops. And then we fight the ant lion, which goes pretty smoothly. One of my favorite things about Final Fantasy IX is that they actually created a brand new status called Trouble. When a character is afflicted with the Trouble status, they take normal damage, but any damage they take is then cut in half and transferred to the other party members. Of course, that status has no effect in a solo run, but still, the ant lion doesn't have a great AI, so it spends quite a few turns casting Trouble Mucus on Zidane, which allows me to finish it off without too much trouble. Well, I guess it's actually with a lot of trouble since that's the status effect. And oh god, I almost forgot this, but there is a part of this section where you control only Freya. If you talk to one of the right priests, they'll give you an emerald, which of course I completely forget to do, and I will tell you why that matters a little bit later. It kind of sucked. Which brings us to our refight with Beatrix, which I'm sure is going to go perfectly well this time, because of course I'm prepared, except I forget to equip the coral ring, so Beatrix finishes me off with a thunder slash. I suck. But the second time, that's the ticket. I equip the coral ring and everything is going to plan. Zidane hits trance and hits Beatrix for some good damage, and then she shocks him to death. Wow. But RNG and a couple of elixirs save the day in my third run through of Beatrix, and we get her. And then she gets us because she's really strong. And then we hit one of the most shocking plot points in any Final Fantasy game. We've just spent all of this energy saving the people of Clara, defeating Beatrix so that maybe things will go back to normal. And this game just says, screw that. We are going to destroy the entire settlement of Clara. Absolutely a 10 out of 10 gut-wrenching choice. I mean, just compare it to other Final Fantasies. In Final Fantasy VII, Aerith dies, and I guess that's devastating. In Final Fantasy VI, Sid dies, and I guess that's pretty devastating. And Celis tries to kill herself, which is kind of crazy. In Final Fantasy VIII, the president dies, but he's kind of an asshole, so who really cares? But in Final Fantasy IX, an entire city is raised, and it's burnt to the ground using one of the main character's summons. And the person using the summon is that character's mother. How crazy is that? Come on! Okay, I'll fanboy later. Let's get back to the run. After that fight, we teleport back to Alexandria, where Steiner and Marcus are escaping from their birdcage. And they have to fight a bunch of Alexandrian soldiers. But Lycaner and Marcus are hugely underleveled, and they cannot stand up to the damage of those Alexandrian women. Listen, they are strong, independent women, and they don't need no man. And when I beat them, I forgot to press the record button, so sucks to be me, I guess. <laughs> The next boss battle is with Zorn and Thorn, who pass off the meteor power to each other. And normally this battle isn't too much of an issue because you just want to attack the one that has the meteor power. But Zidane is kind of slow compared to them, so they're able to get a few meteors off, and this battle comes pretty close to killing me again. But they don't, and I get through it. These two clowns are actually kind of terrifying. And the next fight is another Beatrix fight, and fortunately, this fight went way differently than the other ones. Just kidding, she kills me with shock again. Oh, and and then she does it again, because I am a terrible gamer, and I really suck, so I'm not feeling so good about this battle, but I go into it a third time. And with a little bit of help from RN Jesus, I do overcome her this time. Thank God, because I did not want to have to do this one a fourth time. That would have been so embarrassing. Now we have to fight a bunch of Bandersnatches with just Freya and Beatrix, and Beatrix's level is based on Freya's level, so in a normal normal game where you fought enemies with Freya, Beatrix is going to be at a pretty high level and be able to use her skills pretty liberally, and also kill everything in one shot. But with Beatrix at level 5, she only has enough MP to use Klim Hazard, which is one of her strongest skills, one time. So the first and second banner to snatch battles are just fine, and they actually give a full HP and MP restore in between those two battles. But in the third battle with the banner snatches, Beatrix's MP are just not high enough to use her skills. And by the time I can actually restore them, both Lycaner and Freya are dead. And the Bandersnatches put her to sleep and put her down. Probably revenge for getting neutered, right? So I try again, and this time the Bandersnatches put Beatrix to sleep right away, which is a big problem because that means that she's just gonna get bodied while she can't do anything. And she does. And I wipe again. I'm sad. But I come up with a strategy. On my third attempt, instead 
instead of having Beatrix use Klim Hazard right away, I have her use Shock, which attacks only one enemy and kills it. Then I have Freya restore Beatrix's MP with an Aether, and then she finishes off the final Bandersnatch with physical attacks. That way, all of her MP is ready for the next battle. And a single Klim Hazard finishes off both of the Bandersnatches and gets me past this ridiculously difficult part. Next, we fight the Snaky Snaky boss again, we get Rama for Sharer, and we watch her mom destroy another city, Lindblum. At this point, Queen Bronze seems pretty unredeemable. How can it get worse than this? Now we recruit the very first non-binary character that I've ever seen in any video game. But not necessarily the first. I'd say the first is actually Gogo from Final Fantasy VI, who was just a mimic. And in Final Fantasy IX, we have Queena, or as I call them, Discord, which reminds me that you should join my Discord, where we just talk about RPGs. It's fun. Anyway, we then head into Gargan Roo, where I managed to avoid Lonnie's machine and not end up having to fight it, which probably would have killed me because I'm an idiot. And then we fight Lonnie, who goes down pretty easy. Then we go to the Outer Continent, we go to Tally Ho Land, and then we go to the Black Mage Village, or at least that's where we're supposed to go, except I get killed by one of the goddamn owls. Dude, not even a boss fight, just a regular damn owl fight. I suck. But whatever, I try again and it goes fine. And I should mention that at this point of the game, we get the auto potion ability, which represents a pretty big turning point. Many enemies are able to get two hits in while you're refilling your ATP gauge, so this is extremely useful. Eventually, I'll be getting rid of all of the potions in my inventory and only wanting high potions. If I have regular potions in my inventory, I'll only be able to heal 150 HP because auto potion uses the lowest healing potion in your inventory. So then we learn all about the black mages. We go back to Tally Ho Land, Sharer and Zidane get married, and on their honeymoon, they meet Aiko, who I named Tier, even though I don't have a Final Fantasy IX tier list. So I don't know. I guess I didn't think that one through. Auto Potion serves me pretty well on Hilgigars, and then we have a dinner party, and then we head on to the Leafa Tree, where I have a big problem. And once again, the problem is that I suck and didn't prepare properly. One of the dragon zombie things inflicts zombie on me, and it's just a matter of time before my Auto Potion takes me down. The magic tag item removes the zombie status, and of course, I didn't buy any of those, so I, uh, I suck. So I go all the way back to Medane Sari, grab some magic tags, and head back to the Leafa Tree, where things go a lot better this time. And when I get to the Soul Cage boss, I'm able to exploit that same zombie weakness for myself. I throw a Phoenix down at him, and that causes him to go to critical HP, so one more attack finishes him off. Thank goodness. Then we fight the mascot of cinnamon-flavored gum, and I name him Super. You know what to do. And then we see one of the most heartbreaking scenes in any Final Fantasy. Queen Bronze summons Bahamut and she is hoisted upon her own petard. Or rather, her daughter, since it wasn't her summon to begin with. She just stole the power from her own daughter. Okay, adopted daughter. But does that really make a difference? But what really impacted me about this scene when I first played was not the death of Bronze, but rather the devastation of Dagger. I don't know of any other Final Fantasy game where a character prolonged grief causes them to temporarily perform worse in battle. This is a brilliant example of how showing and not telling can be so strong, even in a video game. But I'm gonna shelve the rest of this discussion for another video. And technically the discussion is a little bit premature. Because before Shara falls silent, I have to lose a bajillion times in a card tournament, and Kuja has to mercilessly destroy the city of Alexandria. During which we have another section where Zidane is not in the party. This time we pilot light Lycaner and Beatrix. And because Lycaner is not quite as underleveled as Freya was when we last got command of Beatrix, Beatrix's level is significantly higher and she's able to take care of these monsters a lot more easily. By the way, the Mystodons are super creepy. I hate bugs. So as I mentioned before, Kuja raises the town using Sharer's own power. Sharer and Tyr summon Alexander and Kuja takes it over, but then it's destroyed. It's a little bit weird. Then we try and fail to change Sid back into a human. He ends up becoming a frog, which I guess is kind of cool. And we find out that Sharer is now completely silenced. And that might not seem like such a big deal in a run like this, but she's one of our lowest leveled characters, meaning that now when she tries to kill herself, she has a chance of failing, which could really suck in the wrong situation. And then we get a boat, but it's not our boat. It's somebody else's boat and we just get to use it, which as we all know is better than having your own boat. Don't buy a boat. The black mages tell us to pursue Kuja and we do, except I don't remember how to get into his lair. It's been a while, folks. Apparently it's the northernmost sand pit, but I die several times fighting 
fighting ant lions, which I shouldn't have gotten into battles with in the first place. I even managed to die to one of the stupid earthworm things. Did you know that in this game, Demi does a quarter of your maximum health and not a quarter of your total health at the time of its casting? Well, I didn't, but now I do. But anyway, then I had to oil vert, however you pronounce that one. I bring Discord, share, and subscribe with me because they're the lowest level magic users, and I want to use tier in the actual desert palace section, along with all the higher level physical characters. And in oil vert, everything goes pretty well. No big deal. I happen to enter the arc battle with Zidane's transmitter almost full anyway, so he basically just blasts through it, especially now that he has his best limit break. Are they limit breaks in this game? No, they're dines. They should have just called them limit breaks. That's basically what they are. And back in the desert palace, I failed a froggy minigame several times, but the desert palace actually is not that bad. By collecting all the bloodstones, you can weaken the boss to the point where it really can't do anything to you. And someone must have put some grated cheddar on this boss, because it ain't gonna slide down easy if it ain't cheesy. Love you tomorrow, double chocolate. And then Tyr gets kidnapped, and we head to Estogaza for what is the biggest challenge of the run yet. These stupid dragons. They have great magical power and a twister spell that does a ton of damage, as well as a bunch of evasion, so it's kind of hard to hit them. And I actually go down the first time I fight them. I'm so frustrated. But in my second battle with them, I take on a little bit of a different strategy. Rather than playing super aggressively, I defend until trance is available and the trance spells are enough to take them both down in one hit. The twin clowns go down pretty easy and then we get an airship. But more importantly, we also get the ribbon item, which has a ton of great elemental resistances. Most notably, it absorbs both wind and water. That will come in very handy very soon. Then in preparation for her next trip to Starbucks, a sharer gets the Karen haircut. But instead of dyeing her tips blonde, we go to Ibsen's castle. And while the boss here goes down on my first try, I can't help but notice that I almost run out of potions. The reason for this is that the boss's coil command makes him very defensive. And I think the only way to get him out of that position is to attack him. But I get a little paranoid here and I start defending. I don't know. Whatever. He dies. Which brings us to the Earth Guardian, who is really easy in this run because I normally don't use Queena. Oh, I mean Discord. And with the Gaia gear equipped, basically Zidane just ends up healing off any damage that he can do. No big deal. I feel like I've been coasting and everything else is going to be kind of easy. I'm sure that I'm not going to die anymore in this run. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So I head on to Pandemonium and there are three sort of unique battles here. The first is with Amducius, which is basically just a Zidane battle anyway. But after that, Discord and Lycaner have to fight a Baden. That's right, no help from Zidane. And they basically just get one-shotted by one of his wind attacks. And that is a big problem because I can't level them up while Zidane is required to be in the party. They also aren't in the party when Zidane is exploring Bran Ball, so I can't switch Steiner's equipment to give him a ribbon, which would help him absorb wind attacks. That was my initial plan. I am in big trouble. Until I realize that if I can just keep Lycaner alive until Zidane joins the battle, I can get through it. So I just have him defend, and then High Wind doesn't kill him, Zidane joins, and Abaddon goes down reasonably easily. The next battle is with Kuja's Dragon, which isn't really a big deal. But things go off the rails when I fight Garland. He has a pretty strong counterattack, telekinesis, and I get totally bodied by it. I gotta play this one pretty carefully, and on my refight, I just make sure to heal more often and defend when necessary. And all of that stalling eventually gets me into trance territory, and I'm able to take him out with a few grand lethals, plus a couple extra attacks. Kuja is next, and compared to Garland, he really can't do much to me, but I guess this is sort of more of a story battle, because my battling Kuja sends him into trance and sets up the end of the game. Next up, I fight the Nova Dragon on the way into Memoria, and it really can't do anything to me, because a lot of its attacks are wind and water based, and I have the ribbon equipped, so I absorb those. I also do something stupid here, which is that I exchange all of my ore for an aquamarine. I don't know why I did that, but uh, it's bad, and we'll see why in just a little bit. But I head back to Memoria to see what I can do. And the first boss in Memoria is Meliris. And this boss can literally do half of my health with one physical attack. Not a critical hit physical attack, just one physical attack. Now, I don't know why I did this, but for some reason, I have Zidane in the front row. I've had him in the front row for the entire playthrough. Had I just put him in the back row, this fight would have been a lot easier. But I didn't think of that, because I'm not thoughtful. So 
Zidane gets massacred, but I try something else next time. I do the defend into trans thing and I actually get her down to zero HP, at which time she uses the desperation tech and takes me out after she's already dead and I'm so frustrated. Ugh. But then the third time I get her down to zero HP, but Zidane's HP is high enough that he can survive her final attack. Which brings us to Tiamat, who has a mechanic called Absorb Strength that makes this battle very difficult. Basically, he takes some of Zidane's strength, making Zidane less powerful, and he absorbs that, making his attacks more powerful. So if you wait too long to finish him off in this battle, you end up just getting destroyed, which, you know, shocker is what happens to me. Twice. Okay, three times. And the fourth time, I think I just got RNG lucky, because Zidane evades a ton of his attacks. But notice that by the end of the battle, I'm doing literally three. 300 damage per physical attack, so it just took a long time. And next up is Kraken, and I kinda thought I made a mistake here, because when I start the Kraken fight, he freezes me, and I swear I had body temp equipped, but I guess I unequipped it for the last battle. I think I gave Zidane Distract to increase his evasion. But fortunately, really the only thing that the Kraken does is cast Water Gut, which heals me, and cast Freeze, which can't kill me because you have to take damage while you're frozen to be killed by the frozen and status, so lucky me. This one was a freebie. But the next one is not, because the next boss I have to fight is the Lich. And the Lich presents a serious problem. It is one of the most dangerous enemies in the game because it casts the Death and Doom spells, both of which are unblockable. So I either have to get really lucky or have them miss, or have someone revive me. Obviously, I can't have someone revive me because everyone else is dead. And remember when I talked about how I was missing some important auto stats? statuses. Well, one of those is Auto Life. Auto Life at least gives me one redo if I get hit by the death spell. I need it. But I have the Rebirth Ring, so I equip it along with Auto Life. I'll still need a little bit of luck, though. And on my 15th try, I finally get that luck. A bunch of death spells miss, and I manage to take him out. And gloriously, I check the time, and it's been less than 12 hours of in-game time, so I'm able to get the Excalibur 2 from Memoria for the first time. I guess that's what happens when I don't spend all of my time playing Chocobo Hot and Cold. Speaking of that, I have a whole video that talks about all of the best JRPG minigames. You should take a look. It's linked right here. Next up, I fight Death Guys, and I die within like three attacks. So I realize at this point that I need to do a little bit of grinding just so that I can survive a few attacks from Death Guys. So I go to the Grand Dragon Mountain thing right outside a Gizmaluk, and I grind and grind, and eventually I do actually die because I'm kind of careless. But eventually I go back to Death Guys, and the grinding that I've done is enough to kill him. Well, okay, I kill him after I die two more times. And Kuja and the final boss are my final obstacle. And I realize that what I really need right now is the auto haste ability. But unfortunately, the only way to get the running shoes is to synthesize them with an emerald. And if you've been paying attention, you might remember that I missed the two available emeralds in the game. Well, two of them. The third one is with the friendly nymph. But I traded away all my ore for aquamarine. I still don't know why I did that. And she wants three ore. So I make a small exception to my prior plan, and I just play a little bit of chocobo hot and cold just to get three ore. I don't consider that cheating, since I could have just kept my ore if I weren't an idiot. It takes me about a bajillion years to to find the friendly nymph, but I give her my three ore and she gives me an emerald and I go back to the Black Mage City and I make my running shoes and now I have auto haste. But I gotta do a little bit more grinding because I also kinda need auto life in this final battle because he can cast a doom and death with his grand cross ability. So I go back to the grand dragon place and I grind a little bit more, but at least this time I don't die. And now it's time to head back to Memoria and go all the way through it, and on the way through, I die to one of the eyeball things, and fight Kuja and the final boss. And if you have made it this far, please hit that like button and leave me a comment letting me know which challenge you'd like to see next. Enjoy my Discord. Kuja's pretty easy. At this high a level, he really can't do anything to me. He just does damage, and I can just shrug it off. Oops. But as I mentioned, Necron provides an interesting challenge. Necron can do several things that throw a wrench in my plan. 
ones. First, his blue shockwave spell can immediately bring Zidane to one HP. Fortunately, auto potion gives us some time to delay and let auto regen also kick in. Neutron ring does a ton of damage and is especially dangerous after a blue shockwave. But Grand Cross is the worst. It can cast just about every spell in the book, including mini, which is my personal least favorite. I had enough AP to equip all of the abilities that make the insta-death statuses go away, but unfortunately several of them, including mini, death, and doom, are just not blockable at all. But there is some variability in which status effects are cast, so basically this battle comes down to RNG and being able to kill him quickly enough that he doesn't get that many grand crosses in. But after three deaths on my fourth try, I get the RNG that I need and the Necron finally goes down. I have beaten the game with only Zidane. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.